started reading the fountainhead. Now, this, is a, this is a good question, difficult one. Thank you, Ross. Started reading the fountainhead. I apologize for the banality of this question. It's not banal, it's a complicated question. Why is the sexual relationship between Rourke and Dominique expressed this way? It seems a little peculiar. Thank you. Well, I assume, I don't know, well, I'm not sure which scene you're talking about because you could argue that all the sex scenes in the fountainhead are peculiar in a modern sense. The two things that Ayn Rand, I think, is trying to dramatize um, in, these, in, the, in, the, in the sex scenes. Both of you of masculinity and femininity, which is very non-PC, and which, very, which many objectivists, I think, disagree with. It's more, her view of masculine and femininity is more a statement in psychology than it is in philosophy. Um, and in this case, the particular nature of the Rourke, uh, of the um, Howard Rourke and uh, Dominique relationship. So the, the so-called rape scene, which is not rape, but the so-called rape scene, is there to really dramatize the, the fact that Dominique is, is in a sense in, it's, 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 it's the, she's got this massive conflict inside of her of valuing and wanting to destroy the values she values, right? She's a very complex and difficult character. And not wanting to get too close, in a sense, not wanting to be intimate with her values because she believes they will be destroyed. She destroys them before she can get too intimate with them because she feels like if other people destroy them, it will be worse for her. So here's this man who she clearly is attracted to, who she clearly wants, who she clearly wants to have sex with. He is the value. And she wants to play it both ways. She wants both to flirt with him, express her attraction with him, but not go all the way. And Rock won't let her get away with that in anything. He won't let her get away with it with regard to sex, so he has sex with her. He, he gives her what she wants. And in the context of the novel, there's no doubt it's what she wants. He won't let her get away with it with regard to her, his architecture. She wants him to stop building. And he says no. He won't let her get away with it in regard to a relationship with him. He says, you, you will be my woman, but you will be my woman. You will be with me as a woman. But only on my terms. Once you accept me as a value and stop wanting me to stop valuing, to stop, once you stop wanting to destroy me. So he's... And she, because she's trying to destroy him and trying to destroy her own attraction to him and trying to destroy everything about their relationship, she then goes, has sex, and actually marries a number of other men who are ultimately Howard Rourke's enemies. So it's a very, very complex juxtaposition of a valuer, a woman who loves him but can't embrace that love because of her attitude towards her values and how she has to learn. And since you just started reading The Fountainhead, you, there's still a lot more for you to read, so I'm not going to give it away. But first of all, it's literature. It's not philosophy. It's a story. It's a drama. Now, it also reflects her attitude towards femininity and masculinity. Ayn Rand was very much about uh, femininity and masculinity, that the, the masculine is, in the context of sex, the active, the penetrator, the, the female is, in a sense, more passive, the one that is penetrated, and the one that is looking up to the male. Not in the sense of, what is it, hypogamy or whatever, because she has to be the equal of the male. Dominique has to be as strong and as able, and at the end of the day, as much of a valuer as work. He is waiting for her to achieve that, for him to fully embrace her. 
Dagny and Atlas Shrugged has to be John Galt's equal in many senses. But at the level of sex, at the level of attraction, at a level of femininity and masculinity, at that level, Dagny has to look up to Galt. That's Ayn Rand's theory. Now, agree with it, disagree with it, that's a theory. And that's what she's reflecting in her novels. I mean, Penny writes, the way their sexual relationship was written in The Fountainhead was brilliant for the characters involved. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you think about who Rourke is, he doesn't let you compromise. He doesn't let you... He, he refuses to... To, to, to compromise or to let you compromise. Think of his relationship with his friends, with the sculptor. With, I mean, you're only in the beginning of the book. He, he won't let you. I mean, he, he, won't, he won't sanction your compromise, playing games, uh, uh, not acknowledging reality and the truth. And in a sense, that sex scene in the fountain is him telling her, you want this. You wanted this. You desire this. Stop lying to yourself. Stop pretending. Stop playing games. This is reality. And that's his character. That's who he is. That's his function. That's his function in the novel. Somebody said, somebody said it was rape by engraved invitation. You know, again, Ayn Rand has a very complex view of femininity and masculinity. She doesn't believe men and women are the same. She doesn't believe femininity and masculinity don't exist. She doesn't believe th there is no... She believes that there are real differences, and they manifest themselves in reality. And they ref are reflected in behavior, particularly vis-a-vis -vis one another, and in particular with regard to sex. Now, again, this isn't the same as the attitude of all these uh, hegemony or, or men going their own way or, or, or the, the, this maleness thing or whatever towards women, which was looking down at them. Men, Ayn Rand's men never look down at women. Ayn Rand's men don't think of themselves as superior, as better. Ayn Rand's men are looking for a woman, and it's hard to find if you're a giant. Who is their equal in some meaningful, in a moral sense? In a moral sense. Dagny is no less productive than Galt. She's no less rational than Galt. She's no less just than Galt. She has, she has no less self-esteem than Galt. She's mistaken. She commits errors. But from a moral perspective, she is Galt's equal. And that's what he's looking for. He's not looking to look down. And she's not looking to look up in that perspective. She's looking, they're both looking for the equals. Yeah, there's a massive spoiler alert. I apologize, but right. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the Super Chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time, so I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to youronbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, Show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...